Good morning. In this video, we're going to be building a Uniswap Market Maker bot. This is going to be a trading bot which executes a buy or sell order based on if the price of a digital asset is above or low a target price. We can use this in a multitude of ways to either kind of create liquidity and reduce volatility on an asset that we're interested in, or to execute orders over a kind of fixed period of time efficiently. Let's dive into this tutorial where if we scroll down, we're going to be taking a look at the GitHub repository. This is all open source code, of course. We're going to have a look at the quote code quickly. Obviously, it's very important to understand the code you're deploying. There's loads of different scams going around for DEX arbitrage bots and kind of this bot will make you $800 a day. They're all scams. No one's going to release a trading bot which makes money. Like it's just it's not something that happens. If you have that kind of alpha and you can create them trading bots, you keep it to yourself because as soon as it's released, it's no longer valuable. This script won't make you rich overnight, but it will hopefully show you how you can execute orders on Uniswap and build your own trading strategies around that. So this is, we're importing the ethers library and a .env config. Uh, .env is for importing environmental variables such as private keys, API keys, things like that. We're going to be putting a WEF address in. This is Goretti WEF and then the Uniswap router and quota address and then a token address for the asset that we want to trade. So in this example, we're on Gorelli and we're trading the Uni and WEF pool. So the Uniswap WEF pool, we're, going to be, we're trading that using Uniswap v3. Um, these addresses don't tend to change. Uniswap deploys them to the same address on all blockchains. These two addresses, the WEF address and the token address will change. So if you're trading that on Polygon, for example, that WEF address is going to be wrapped Matic instead of WEF and it's going to have a completely different token address. And obviously, if you want to trade a different token or a different pool, it's going to have a different contract address here as well. Every pool on Uniswap v3 has a different fee rate. You might sometimes get two or three different fee rates for the same liquidity pair. And in this example, we're going to be using 3,000 basis points. This is the 0.3% standard liquidity pool size for Uniswap. But check what it is that's set up that has the most liquidity for the network that you're working in. If we scroll down, we've set a buy amount. This is 0.001 Ether. This is the amount we're going to spend on every transaction. We then got a target price, which is the target exchange rate. So this basically equates to 35 uni tokens per ETH. And then we're working out target amount out and sell amount out for the other side of the trade. And then we're going to work out the trade frequency. This is set in milliseconds, so it's currently executing once per hour. So once per hour, it will check the price and trade. Uh, based on the price level. So if the price is gone above the set level, then that will sell the tokens. If the price falls below the level, it will buy the tokens. Obviously, this is using a fixed constant target price, but there's lots of different things you could do. You could potentially set the target price to the last execution price and create a kind of pseudo fair value kind of concept there for market making. A slightly more advanced technique would be to use a moving average. So you could use the moving average of an asset over time and then use that to calculate fair value and whether you should be trading above or below that price. Or you could do something potentially more price manipulative if you're transparent about it and kind of have a trading channel and move the price of a digital asset you're interested in up over time. So over time, you expect it to appreciate and your bid price and sell price for that digital asset adjusts over time. Next thing we're going to do is set up a provider and a wallet account. The provider, we're using Alchemy API for their RPC nodes, which connect to the Ethereum network, and we're providing an Alchemy API key there. They're free to use. We're going to set up a wallet with a private key held in a .m file or an environmental variable. Um, this is obviously not particularly secure. It's a hot wallet. You're going to be running this either on your local computer or on a server that's connected to the internet. So certainly don't use the same wallet address that you store your main funds in and execute it on testnet first. Make sure you understand how everything works and how to set it up before you do anything on mainnet. We're going to go through and set up some interfaces. We've got a standard ERC20 token here with just the approve and allowance functions. We need to prove the spend of a token for the router to take that token to swap it. And then we've got the router address itself, which has an, a function called exact input single. This is the Uniswap v3 or one of the Uniswap v3's uh, functions to trade tokens. And then we're using the quota contract, which is another contract provided by Uniswap to get a price for that asset pair. So we're going to use that to check the current price, basically, before we make the trade. We've got a couple of functions here to buy and sell tokens. With the buy token example, we are sending ETH with the transaction. So we're sending raw ETH and that gets converted to WEF on the back end. And then with the sell tokens, we're actually going to check our allowance. And then if the allowance is less than the sell amount, we need to approve the spend of that token. In production, you'd actually want to do this in bulk. You want to give the router full um, access to your tokens because you don't want to be doing this individually because it'll increase your gas fees. 
And then finally, we're calling the exact input single, which swaps the tokens on Uniswap, and it'll provide a hash for that transaction. We then got a loop here, which calls check price every trade frequency. So once every hour, this function is gonna get called, and we're using the quota contract to find the current exchange rate for the WEF and token pair. It'll print out the current exchange rate and the target exchange rate, and then if the amount's less than the target amount, it will buy tokens. If the amount is more than the target amount, it will sell tokens. Now we understand the code and what it's doing, let's set this up from scratch to make some trades. So we're gonna go into the GitHub repository. If you have GitHub installed, you can actually just fork the repository, but I'm gonna download the zip file here. I'm gonna go in and copy all these files into a local directory. And then I'm gonna rename the .env sample file just .env. And I'm gonna open this up in a text editor. I'm using Visual Studio code here. You can see I have a private key and the Alchemy API key. Also be very careful storing private keys if you're using anything with any funds on. I'm gonna set it up and then we can open up a terminal. We can run npm install, which will install the libraries we need. Note that we're also gonna need some funds. We need some Gorelli ETH in the test wallet that we're using to make this transaction. And let's run node mm.js. You can see we've got the current exchange rate here, which is below the target exchange rate. If that was above, you'd actually need some tokens in your wallet address as well to sell them. But in this case, we're buying tokens, so we just need to come Gorelli ETH. And that's executed, and it's given us the transaction hash. This will now sleep for an hour and then do the same thing in an hour's time. If we go to Gorelli.etherscan, we can paste this hash in and check the code to see that we've swapped 0.001 Ether for this amount of the Uniswap token. If we scroll down and decode the input, we can see the token in, token out, fee, recipient is our own wallet address, and then we've got the amount in is the amount we're trading. Note that we haven't set an amount out minimum, so this would be potentially susceptible to MEV type attacks if you're trading large amounts on Ethereum mainnet, for example. Also, if you're gonna put this into production, you probably wanna kind of do something different with the trade frequency. You might wanna monitor the mempool for incoming transactions and trade when, when other trades are made, or you might wanna do something like add some randomness there so it wasn't so predictable. The full tutorial is on my blog and that's linked to in the description. This goes through some of the details about how it works and some of the use cases as well that you can use this trading bot for. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you wanna learn more about blockchain development, decentralized finance, and subscribe for updates, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And thank you for watching.